Okay, so we are back. We are trying this again. I hope I can see your comments. Let's try. If you ladies are here, Abby Revis, I know you guys were, you ladies were with me. If you can put a comment in the comment box. So, hey, ladies. Oh, yay, it worked. Ah, I'm so happy I did that. Okay, thank you. We are back live in action because today is a juicy topic, and I know you ladies, uh, you're going to like it because I have, so all of the principles and techniques, there's four of them in particular that I'm going to share with you today. I've practiced and lived by for, I'd say about four or five years. And they may be a little controversial because people don't really talk about relationships like this, but in my studying and my practicing, it really resonates with me. I do a lot of listening to Abraham Hicks. Do you ladies know who Abraham Hicks is? If you don't, it's changed my life. I would not be and or have the relationship I have today if it weren't for Abraham Hicks and these teachings that I'm going to teach you today. And I'm completely honest. Any of my, if any of you ladies have been at any other events that I've spoken about this topic and relationships, you know. So I'm just gonna dive right in and tell you a little bit of my story so that you can, can hear and uh, tell you a few concepts before we get into the four secrets. So it'll prove why the four secrets are the secrets, but they're not so secret because I'm telling you today. And so anyways, thank you, good morning. Um, so relationships. Relationships and everything that we want, we want because we believe in the having of it, it will make us feel better. And so a lot of times we are seeking relationships, romantic or platonic, and are wanting things externally to make us feel better internally. So that is a huge cue that dating relationships are a really great opportunity to work in here and use everything that we're getting externally to continue to heal and become our best self, okay? And I'm gonna give you specific examples because I personally love dating. So if you're single, this is a shout out to you. I love dating. And I'm going to tell you why, but you can use this concept if you're in a relationship, and I still do. Dating and our relationships with people, every time we are triggered by somebody else and it triggers something within us, that is an invitation to look inward and see, you know, what's going on here? What's happening? So I'm just going to throw it all out here. I've shared this live. This is a very intimate story. So no judgment. This is a no judgment zone. I, oh my God, I'm nervous telling you this, but I'm going to tell you because it's so extreme and I want you to learn from my experience. No, Jen, dating does not suck. <laughs> I loved it. And so let me tell you. So I was going on dates with people and I had dated this one guy who I literally feel like I'm talking to my girlfriend. So girlfriend chat this morning. I had dated this one guy and he lived in New York and he would always come and stay at the Ritz Carlton in Toronto. And anyways, we were dating for a while and finally comes the time that you are, you know, you may become, you may take your relationship to the next level. And so I stayed over and honest to goodness, I roll over. So the two of us are in bed. I roll over and I see his colleague standing there naked. Okay. And I want to pause right here because I want you to pay attention to what's igniting within you. As you can see, I don't really have any reaction about it. I think it's funny, but I want you to notice what's going on in you. Are you thinking like, Oh my God, guys are such pigs. Oh my God, I can't believe that happened. Oh my goodness, this is why dating is so awful. Okay, listen to the story that's going on in your head. In that moment, so the story going on in your head right now is what we need to work on. My story that happened in that moment was like, oh my goodness, you're supposed to, like to the guy I was seeing, you're supposed to be protecting me. Like what is going on here? So lo and behold, the colleague had a key to get into the bedroom so they could 
lure me into three people and I was not having it. <laughs> However, you know, got dressed and, and left and my whole, I walked home because I was triggered obviously in that moment and listening to my triggers, like, oh my goodness, you're supposed to protect me. Like, I can't believe this. Now I took this and in every trigger in dating, I was like, heal me, show me what I need to heal. Show me how I can get to my best self. Show me how I can get to the man that I want to be with. I, for the next three weeks, use the mantra every day. I do not need anyone. I am completely taken care of. I am completely fine on my own. I do not need anyone to take care of me. And after the three weeks, the whole situation didn't even bother me because I was looking for a man to take care of me and protect me, okay? And I needed to fill that and, and heal that in order to be a better dater, okay? I hope you enjoyed that story. I need some comments in here because that was a very vulnerable story and you ladies are still with me. So anyways, whatever is happening, it is not attaching any excuses or judgment to the actual situation. I don't care what's going on in our lives with relationships. Everything is a mirror and an opportunity to look at how Am I reacting? What is currently going on in my head? Do I want this to be my truth? And what am I looking for in the other person to make me feel better in this moment? Okay? So if we look at each relationship, each dating experience with that lens, it just keeps making us better and more full and complete. So we are no looking, no longer looking outside of ourselves to make us feel better. Okay, are you ladies with me? I hope I can still see your comments. There you go. I would have freaked out and felt like my trust was violated. Totally. So reflect on a situation that happened within that moment and look, ask yourself, Jen, what am I looking for from this person? And in you looking at what you're looking for from that person, look at how can you start giving it to yourself? Because if you're constantly looking for something and someone else to give you something, you're going to be attracting similar people that may not make you fulfilled and or the foundation of your relationship might be based on things that you're trying to fill within yourself. So my goal within this chat is how do we become our most complete, secure, confident, true self? And when I say true, I mean like the truth of who we are, true self in order to create the best relationships possible around us. Okay. I could literally talk about relationships forever. I have lots of stories. I really enjoyed dating. So yeah, thanks ladies. Thanks, Michelle. Um, so I'm going to go into my four secrets of manifesting your best relationships. And again, this can be done while dating and in a relationship because I used these secrets on my current boyfriend. He was not my boyfriend at the time we were just dating. And there were elements of our relationship that I did not like. And I'm going to tell you what I did. I never tried to change him. I never tried to force something that wasn't there. Everything just naturally evolved. And now with a person that I never thought would turn into anything, I have the relationship I've always wanted. The key was I always stayed very clear to what I wanted. So the first, well, I'm now, I'm now giving you two exercises for this week. The first exercise is to look at in my past dating experiences and or relationship experiences, or even if something happens today, what am I looking for from the other person to give me? And how can I start giving it to myself? The second exercise I'm giving you today is to get very clear on the type of relationship you want. Now, that's a very loaded question because I want you to be careful about why you want things. I got to the point where I thought I was so clear on the relationship I wanted 
but it wasn't really what I wanted. I ended up just kind of surrendering and saying, you know, bring me the people I need, bring me the people I need to be my best self and to create the relationship, the relationships I want. So when I say want, I want you to focus on how you want to feel in a relationship. I want to feel confident and, and clear and romantic and in love and, and appreciate it. I want to appreciate someone else. Love is often how someone else makes you feel about yourself. So think about how you want to feel about yourself in a relationship. Okay. All right. Awesome. Cool. I, I like that we're liking this. Okay. Now, now we're moving on to the four secrets. I wrote them down to make sure I don't lose track because I could just talk a talk a talk a talk a. The first thing, and again, I practice this all with my current boyfriend, and this includes when you're in a relationship, do not be attached to the outcome. When we're dating, I'm going to give both examples. So when we're dating, it's so easy to think like, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? Oh my goodness, who is this person? Oh my goodness, like, is, does he like me? What, you know, I think this could be it we need to stop. Dating is the best exercise of presence. So how can we just be with our partner, with our, you know, husband, our boyfriend, someone we're dating? How can we just be in the moment, even our husbands? And I know there may be some religious, um, you know, connotations here that if you believe that divorce isn't there, that's fine. But I'm going to give you, this is coming from an energy perspective. No one is forced to be with you. You are not forced to be with anyone else. So if you carry an energy to a situation that it's okay, whatever happens, happens, I'm going to keep following my truth and you keep following your truth. And I'm here for you as a partner. And if no longer this is working for us, that's cool. That is cool. Having that energy in a relationship, we all know, like when people are leeching onto us and we're leeching onto others, this suffocation happens and this forced energy happens. When really, if we come back to our highest self, we just want to love, we want to be happy, we want others to be happy. Okay? This takes some practice of just no expectation. So when I was dating my current boyfriend, there were like, I don't want to call them red flags, but let's call them red flags. There were red flags. And I didn't necessarily know if that was someone I wanted to be with. And in that moment, that was okay. I was like, okay, well, whatever happens, happens. I'm just going to enjoy him when I enjoy him and, and not when I don't want to. And in that energy, it allowed for the evolution. I think in relationships, we have lost the appreciation and the presence of an evolution of a relationship, an evolution of love, an evolution of a person. You are not the person you are going to be in a year and neither is your partner. So allow for the growth and the evolution. I kept evolving and focusing on myself in my relationship and I still continue to. And so does my boyfriend. It is not always easy, but in that you're both on your own journey and you're choosing to live it together. Every day is a choice to be together. Is this making sense? Okay. The not attached to the outcome as well as expectations. Releasing all expectations of how that other person should be and shouldn't be. Again, going back to the first exercise, if you feel like your partner should be doing something, look at, okay, how can I start giving this to myself? It just changes the energy. These tools completely change the energy, right? I'm going to give you an example. I had a client whose husband was driving her nuts. He was coming, he was at home all day and wouldn't be taking out the, wouldn't be taking out the, um, the, with the garbage. And she was just like, really, you've been home all day and you couldn't take out the garbage, right? We can all relate to that. Instead, when we were talking about, okay, how can you come to this situation without expectation, 
and without being attached to the outcome of him actually doing it. It's an energy thing. So then she started coming in and she goes, Hey, um, you know, let me give you an example. Cause she, we did a few examples with her and it was just like, Hey, I hope you've had a really good day, right? Like just connection to human. And just say, you know, I really wanted the garbage taken out today. Do you think you'll be able to get to that? If not, no worries, I'll do it. And she started to play with her communication and the energy she was bringing to her relationship. Because then that other person wants to do it for you, right? So this is a huge concept that we will talk about weeks upon weeks. Because whatever energy we're bringing to a relationship will match us. I know this is going to take work because you have a lot of momentum in the direction. Like, oh, he never takes out the garbage. Oh, he never does that. Oh, she never does this. But if we wipe away the past and are just living in the present moment, if we just met this person today, how would we react? And that just shows us there's so much baggage in our relationship. So how can we change our energy that we're bringing to the table? Is this making sense? And we're going to, we might need some specific examples that you ladies uh, share, but this will be an ongoing practice. So it's like a stranger. You love every stranger for the most part until you have a reaction or interaction with them. And then you start placing judgment and opinions right? So how can we release the judgment and opinions and just love because you are a lover, not necessarily because the other person is being lovable, right? So taking ownership of the energy you're bringing to the table, your expectations, your judgments and opinions. Okay, moving on to the next two steps and secrets. Secrets, I like that word, but they're not so secret. Listen to Abraham Hicks. She talks about it all the time. So number three, visualizing the vortex version of the other person. Let me explain that. The vortex version or the ideal self version. Vortex is specifically from Abraham. So I want you to envision the highest self of the other person. If you're envisioning the highest self of the other person, they can rise to the occasion. If you're seeing them for all their faults and problems, you're keeping them there. So let me give you an example. I met this one young boy who had been a drug addict and alcoholic since he was 11 years old in his small town. He was going this, I had met him after rehab and he obviously went to rehab and it was very difficult for his family to see him as a new healed and non-addicted person. His success of staying sober would be is a lot easier if his parents were able to accept and see him as his healed self. If his parents were to keep him as his old and see him as his old, you know, drug addict and alcoholic, it would keep him there and the likelihood of him, him becoming that again would be higher. Do you see that? Do you do you see this example? So how are you currently holding your relationships in that same boat? Seeing them as their evolved and, and best self is so beautiful. Just like you should see yourself and connect to your highest self. Do you see how the principles that we're talking about, about self now just move over to relationships? It's super powerful. Okay. And the last secret, number four, I know these are going to take a little bit to to comprehend and think about, and it might be challenging how you've been thinking about relationships for years, but I'm telling you, it, it's really cool and really shifts things because the person I see today in my boyfriend was his highest self I saw over three years ago. And he just kept stepping in and stepping in and stepping up. And I was never attached to my dream relationship being him. It was a complete surprise that it came from him. But going into the fourth step, I kept tuning in to the feeling, which is the exercise I gave you before, the feeling of how I wanted my best relationship to be. I'm going to give you a specific example. 
when I was uh, when I was with my boyfriend, I this was like a while in, and I in the morning, I rolled over and thought, oh, wouldn't it be nice? if my boyfriend rolled over every morning, I don't even think he knows this story. Wouldn't it be nice if my boyfriend rolled over every morning and looked at me and just said, you are so beautiful. I'm so lucky to be with you. So this is a game, like have fun with this ladies. I was visualizing this every morning and the key to visualization, we'll do a whole training on manifestation, but the key to visualization is actually feeling it. So I would feel in that moment in the morning, like, oh, my boyfriend is rolling over and my man is rolling over and telling me how beautiful I am. I literally felt it as if it was happening. Our mind does not know the difference between if it's happening in real life or we're making it up in our mind. So I did this and now let me tell you, my boyfriend rolls over every morning and says, you are so beautiful. I'm so lucky to be with you. Good morning, gorgeous. Hi, how are you? And you have the power in your energy to change a situation, to create a situation. But again, in that moment, and let me attach it back to the expectation. I did not care if he was the man to fulfill that manifestation for me and to live and fulfill that reality for me. I was like, my man will do this. And that's okay if it's you, and that's okay if it's someone else. Allowing that space for him to grow, and or if he doesn't grow, then it'll allow room for someone else, okay? So this kind of attaches to manifestation if you are a believer and or you practice manifestation. And so looking at, this is really just a chat on what energy are you bringing to the table? How can you rise to your highest self and connect to the vibration and the energy that you want in your life and then allow everything else to rise and meet you there? But know that as you start to practice these tools and techniques, again, I'm going to go through all four. We have visualization, um, of your ideal relationship, visualize the best version of the other person, not being attached to the outcome and releasing all expectation. Once you start to practice this, you're going to start to practice and think like, what the heck? Like, why am I doing all of the work? I am really working on my manifestation. I'm working on my alignment and this person, they're not doing anything. And that's okay because you have a lot of momentum in the direction that you're going, you need to slow that ball down and then start it stopping and or reversing in the other direction. So don't expect to stop a moving train going miles a minute. We need to slow the train down first, start practicing. Like you might confuse your partner a little bit when you start practicing this. They're going, who am I with? But let's see today how you can start to raise your vibration And if you have specific examples, let me know because we can practice it. Definitely take some practice to see how can I actually implement this in my life. And I'm going to give you a bonus, (laughs) a bonus secret. Relationships aren't about the other person. It's about you. So we need to stop blaming the other person for making us feel a certain way. How you feel is all you. So how can you start putting your feeling and alignment number one. So in each moment, just think, how can I step into my highest self? How can I find alignment in this moment? And your reactions, it's not about the other person. It's about your reaction. So regardless of the situation, how can you bring your highest self to the table so that you can have a good relationship? Instead of projecting all your shit, all your fears, all your insecurities onto the other person and expecting them to know how to manage that because then they're just going to throw and project their stuff on you. So instead of going with fear against fear and battling, how can you bring your highest self to the table? And even if they're bringing their fear, that's okay because this is your highest self. And you're just going to focus on your alignment and how you feel and stop blaming the other person for impacting how you feel. Okay, this is going to take practice. We're going to come back next Thursday and we're diving right in. And I want you to tell me 
things that you practice this week to start shifting the energy in your relationship. And I still do this today. Are you kidding? The other day, it was late at night and I was like getting ready for bed and I wanted my boyfriend to, to draw the bath for me. And he just was in a mood and he was like, no. And I don't even remember the exact situation, obviously, because it doesn't matter. But I was kind of annoyed. And then as I was pouring the bath, I go, it's okay, because my man, he'll just rub me a bath, no problem. And it, it makes you feel better, if nothing else, and raises your energy to you being with a man who just did it. And again, your brain does not know the difference. So in my mind, I rewrote that entire story in my mind that my boyfriend actually poured the bath for me. Okay, it's really cool. Ravis, I'm super glad that you love this training. I love this training too. I could go on and on about relationships. Anyone else? Do you have any questions as we finish up today? And or anything that really resonated with you that you're going to try this week? I would love to know. And so really just asking yourself, like, what energy have you been bringing to your relationships, to dating? And how can you shift that? so that you are already living in your dream relationship, even though you may not see it. So believe it and feel it before you see it and it will happen, I promise, I promise. I am a living, breathing example that my relationship has completely transformed. And I could tell you lots of stories. Anyone else, anyone in there? We're gonna finish up. I just wanna see if anyone is typing because sometimes I don't always see. And I wanna give you a little bit of time to type any questions or your takeaways. Awesome. Thanks, Mariana. Thanks for giving me some feedback there. Anything else that you ladies wanna take away from today and are gonna try this week and or any specific questions you might have? If you have specific questions, bring them next Thursday. We'll dive deep. I agree. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Mia. Oh, Denise, love what you said um, that every day you choose to be with someone. Yeah, we totally do. And that's something my boyfriend and I practice. Like every day we're making the choice, choose to be with the other person and what you're bringing to the table. We will chat about this later today. Awesome, Jen. Okay, cool. Well, I'm going to sign out for this morning. Have a wonderful Thursday. We are almost there, even though we're currently in quarantine and every day feels the same. It's all good. Join me tomorrow at 10 o'clock and tomorrow is Friday, 10 a.m. Friday is networking day. So we're gonna chat about building out your network, finding mentors and finding the right people in your life to support you along your journey. So I will see you tomorrow, 10 a.m. Friday for our networking chat. Thanks for joining me today, chatting about relationships and committing to you changing your vibration and being your highest self every day because everything starts with you and then everything around you will start to change and it's just a process and a journey i love you for being on this with me sending you so much love bye for now